speeds. March 2nd? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, um, what day was it of the week? I want to say I have an auction. Yeah, I think I'm going to be in Philly. I just want to make sure we gave him a list of names. I would love to. I'll just say things that you would have said, like, Outstanding police department, excellent leadership, committed man. I would have. You know, I would have. I said, organizations really taking shape, just like the state police. What's that? I said, I lost you when you said something about the state work. <laughs> Great organization. Just think you'd be retired, make it 75% of the job. He's really full of compliments tonight. I know. He's like all, with friends like him, right? <laughs> How many years would you have? Oh, I would have. I could have left in 2016. Oh, like with press. I joined when I when I was 21. Okay. Um, yes, you know, like yes. Yeah. I remember when you know press. 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 Yeah. Oh yeah, Neil. You don't. You don't yeah, have to sign you know, in if you're not going like to speak, but if you think you might want to speak, then it's helpful if you sign in so that we have the information. Yeah. They get 75%. Doesn't matter. Did Neil make sergeant or did he, was he corporal? He made sergeant. Okay. I'm confused when he walked in and sat up there. I was like, no, wait a second. Just put some guys like this. <laughs> yes, apparently, although I'm not sure what they're. Be my guest. I mean, I don't see anything. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, but it's not familiar. Like looking at him, I don't know. But he claims that the address is on the signing sheet, by the way. I don't know. I don't tend to ask people their age. <laughs> it's actually been a running topic this evening, yeah. so it's just slid right in there. Yeah, I'm going to watch it from the. All right. Thanks. Yes. Yeah. If you're not, if you don't want to speak, you don't have don't to sign in. I think so. <laughs> well, Sasha on road bumped. Yeah, it's, it's on there quite a few times. So. What's up? <laughs> some Sydney for Orville Road. Will this go in after the improvements are made to? During, um, can they go in after the improvements are made to Good and Marietta? No, oh, well, Marietta's going to be first. Marietta's first, right? And then the traffic signal. Are and we then, prepared to start? Because it says this summer, fall. Are we ready for 
please keep telling me that's a schedule that you make. Do we have any more right of ways to obtain? We have three. And what are we doing there? Um, both want money, both have attorneys, uh, nothing significant. So we should be able to settle those out. The third one I'm meeting tomorrow with Chris Bauer to go over what we need. And I already talked to Mark Hill and he's fine down at uh, Marriott and Good. So. so is there anything that's holding this up? Is Chris holding this up or is there, I mean, is there a Chris way? Chris would be holding us up in terms of because I have not seen this yet. Okay. Can we um, put a, uh, or push him to, I do not want to miss the season and be, okay. Yeah, no, I hear you. Okay. What's this? No, I think, I think some of them are, I, I don't know. So. Their address is
And he did. He is here. I don't know. And he did make it. He really usually cuts it close. Uh -uh. He's in the parking lot. I don't know. He's here. How do you know? That's <laughs> <laughs> telepathic thing you got going on. I can feel him. In Andy, how are you? Good. How about you? Good. Thank you. Six o'clock. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to tonight's meeting. I'm going to read an opening message. Uh, tonight's meeting has been advertised to be held in person and online using Zoom with login and call information posted on our website. Tonight's video and audio is being recorded. For tonight's meeting, Robert's rules will still apply and the meeting will be run by the chairman who will be assisted by an employee managing the Zoom site. During the meeting, in order to offer comment, you must be recognized by the chairman. For people utilizing Zoom, you will need to use the chat function to be recognized. Text your name and address. Your request to speak will then be passed on by staff to the chairman to be recognized. Once recognized by the chairman, unmute your microphone, and after speaking, please mute your microphone. East Enfield Township's public comment rules will apply for all public comment. You must be a resident or business owner in the township to speak. You must identify yourself by name and address before speaking and sign the guest log for meeting minute purposes or follow the chat procedure already discussed for Zoom attendance. Comment is limited to three minutes. It must be about the agenda item being discussed with the exception of public comment for non-agenda items. No action will be taken on any non-agenda item of a non-emergency nature during the public comment period for agenda items. All comments should be directed to the board. Okay, we will now move on to our first item. Please join me in a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. And now the pledge. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, our first item of business will be approval of the minutes from January 19th, 2022. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Move for approval. Motion by Mr. Lefevre to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Weaver. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries three to zero to approve the minutes. Okay, old business, our monthly report of projects related to traffic. Mrs. Schweitzer. This is, this is just a report that we keep you updated on the status of the various roads that we're working on. As you know, we have a, a process of going through and doing speed studies and then documenting as we move along. I, I, I can go over it if you like, but it, it's essentially 
just something for you to keep track of what's going, what's happening. There's no action needed on these. So any comments overall on the monthly report? I believe the items of note will be covered in the rest of the agenda. Right. Correct. Okay. Hearing none, um, one of the items in the report had to do with Spring Valley Road speed humps and uh, discussing a path forward with those speed humps. Mrs. Schweitzer, could you give us some background? So, so just to give you an update or where we started with this process, we had a two residents along the roadway inquire that there was excessive speeding on the road and they actually went to up and down Spring Valley Road to their neighbors and inquired what they thought about calming traffic. They came back with their report and the township then proceeded to do a speed study. The speed study indicated that there was a slight traffic issue in terms of the average speed. It was 36 miles per hour. The um, 85th percentile was 42 miles per hour. And the other documented note was that 55% were actually enforceable violations. We took that and we used our existing temporary speed humps to put out there. We put them in three places. We had them up for probably four or five months and then removed them in November because of the snow. So at this point, um, we're looking for direction from the traffic commission, what you'd like to do. The spring is coming. Should they be replaced with permanent speed humps? Should we look at other alternatives? We've had discussions with other neighbors that are not supportive of the humps. So we kind of want to get a feel for what you'd like to do. Um, I, we had spoken earlier before this meeting and I asked you um, if you could pull up a diagram. Can we mm -hmm. put that on the screen of where the actual um, temporary speed bumps were? On the last page. Were placed. So this is the location that was recommended by our traffic engineer, McMahon Associates. We put in three speed humps uh, along Spring Valley. So obviously this was done last year and I was not part of the traffic right. commission at that time. Um, I have heard from a couple of residents um, with specific concerns about cut through traffic to avoid um, the two speed bumps labeled one and two. Um, I think it's a similar uh, situation as Farmingdale, where what we did didn't calm the traffic, it just pushed it in other areas, kind of like pushing water. Um, so, for my, my two cents on this, you know, at the very least, I, I'd like to see us revisit this issue and not just move forward with putting speed humps in these locations. Um, I'd like to see if there's anything else we can do with our traffic engineer. And specifically, I'd, I'd like to take a look at removing one and two. Um, well, Mr. Chairman, in addition to the um, people violate, uh, avoiding by moving the speeding elsewhere. There was a lot of, well, there was some disrespect reported to us where blowing horns, squealing tires, doing things that really disrupted the neighbors. Um, in my mind, I think I'd like to suggest that we have given a notice of our awareness of a problem here trying to have faith in people's good judgment. Maybe come spring, there will be many of the previous violators who will act more in accordance with the recognized law and good conduct there. And possibly we could avoid the bumps which actually tend to penalize more people than they correct those that are bad. Um, that's my thought on, on the matter. I agree. I mean, uh, I think we all got 
several emails about the subject and um, it seems that many of the residents are not in favor of them. Um, and that was kind of the whole point of putting them there in the first place. So if it's not working and people don't want them there, then I think we need to try to find something else, another uh, traffic calming measures. So before we make any formal decision, is there anyone from the audience that would like to speak on this subject? If you could come to the microphone and just state your name. Uh, yes, good evening. I'm Roger Brubaker. I live at uh, 2816 Mimosa Lane, uh, Long Spring Valley. And I've been, a, uh, I've been a resident living along Spring Valley Road for over 30 years now. So I've seen many, many changes of Spring Valley Road. Uh, not, not the least of which is the, the actual location of Spring Valley Road. So um, uh, certainly my sense is that, um, you know, the, the speed bumps it, to me isn't a very good solution. Um, and I would suspect uh, the majority of people that, that I've spoken with uh, in our community and other areas of Spring Valley um, are, are not in favor of speed, speed bumps there. Um, so uh, I just wanted to make sure that uh, I voiced that opinion here. Uh, it sounds as though the, the three of you uh, are are understanding the situation, and I'm I'm pleased to hear that the, uh, the conversation tonight already that we're not jumping to some quick uh, conclusion that these speed humps are the solution to these this traffic problem. I also believe that um, in, in my experience, just just driving back and forth to work on that road over the 30 years. Uh, certainly, the traffic has increased to some degree, uh, and there are there are certainly those who tend to speed on that on that road. I've, I've certainly seen plenty of that, but but I think by and large, most of the people that live there or that travel that road do live there. Um, I don't believe, in my opinion, that it's used for a significant uh, you know tr drive through to connect 741 and Centerville Road. Uh, I just, I just don't, I'm sure there's some people that do that, but I don't think that's the majority of traffic that travels that road. So there are people in our community and I think they would be adversely affected by uh, speed humps on that road, especially speed humps that are as close as the ones that were put out there temporarily. I, I yeah, I thought that was extremely excessive to have speed bumps that close together <laughs> on that road uh, and not really even addressing, the, even trying to address the problem. So. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm, that's all I have to say. I appreciate uh, the opportunity and I appreciate your uh, willingness to, to think about this and understand the problem to a greater degree before you uh, make a decision on that. Great. Thank you. Mr. Brubaker, did you sign in? Yes, I did. Great. Thank you. Good evening. Hi. Thank you for having the opportunity to speak and uh, find out what has already been done. One of my questions was, how did this all get started and what has been done to this point? So um, my name is uh, Larry Jones. I'm a resident of East Hempfield for more than 35 years. Uh, my wife, Susan, and I live at 2018 Mimosa Lane, which is in the Arbor's development. I'm here this evening to raise my objection to the speed bumps on Spring Valley Road. All residents in the area appreciate the new paving that we have at Spring Valley Road and uh, it's cured many issues uh, that were there before, but we still <clears throat> are left with ma many other situations as the community has grown there. Um, I personally travel the east and west on Spring Valley Road uh, for personal reasons multiple times a day. Uh, I typically, uh, well, when I get on Spring Valley, I've set my car cruise control 25 and just go and see what happens as you go back the road. So I am sensitive to, to speeding. I've probably done that some myself uh, at times. But the other situations that I hope we can address as we're looking at a broader study and what's going on uh, there is that the, the speed of the vehicles is a, is, is a part of the problem. But I think there's other things on that road that are dangerous, that are that are really safety issues that we ought to look at uh, trying to solve. The, the drain, there is a, 
a drain, <laughs> the drain covers are poorly placed for driving. Uh, they are covered now, but you had to kind of sweep, weave around them <laughs> not to run over top of them or dip down, down in. Maybe that's just, that was the only thing you could do with the width of the road that was there. But also there's, there's plenty of people walking, biking uh, along that road that uh, I guess it would be on the south side. There's no, there's no space at all to get off the road. If you walk on the uh, north side, you can get off the road, but I'm not sure how that goes. People walk their dogs on the road uh, as you're walking down there, going down. There's water runoff uh, from the driveways that freezes on that road. Uh, because of improper drainage for some of the areas that are there. Uh, I would just suggest that maybe lighting could possibly help some of the areas that are that are very dark. Uh, I just feel that personally more speed bumps will will definitely harm our home values. It's very uh, taxing uh, to slow yourself down to go through there and then when as Roger said to have the dupe the double together uh, I don't know, we'll get road rage or, or what out of it, but it, it, uh, it's, it's not the solution. My hope is that there's a proper study of the issues and investment to solve the problems. Uh, and to do that study would allow us proper time, frankly, to partition the residents in the area. I think this may be helpful, but my own sense is that there are few that feel that bumps are the only, only and best solution. Thank you for your time. I'm Phil Berge, uh, 2877 Mimosa. I haven't signed in, but I will do so. Thank you. Um, I would just, just highlight a couple other things. There's more than a few um, emergency vehicles going through Spring Valley. Proximity to the medical uh, facilities, you know, on Roarstown is part of that. Um, I would be concerned about speed humps and the impact that way. I'm especially concerned about Dorcia, which is already not a very, um, easy road to navigate on either end at Marietta or on Spring Valley. And I can only imagine how it would drive more traffic uh, through that way to avoid speed humps. So I can, it would have to, it would need lots of attention to the Dorcia uh, aspect of Spring Valley as well as Marietta because of how much more traffic I think that would generate. It's already dangerous pulling out either, either direction. Um, I could highlight some other things that folks have said. It's difficult, you know, it's hard on vehicles. Um, be tough to keep the roadway free of snow. It's already a challenge with icing, as somebody has mentioned. So I just uh, would speak in favor of, of um, you know, really looking at the options. And I'm sympathetic to um, not wanting it to be dangerous for all of us. Um, and just not sure speed humps is a very good idea. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Sylvia Schellenberger, 2875 Mimosa Lane. And um, I agree with what's been said already. In addition, I'd like to say that perhaps another solution is that to put up those solar indicators that tell your speed as you're going past them. There are two of uh, those now on Spring Valley Road and perhaps more of those. That really made me aware of the speed that I was going. So perhaps that's an idea. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening, my name is Bill Trites. William Trites live at 800 Westminster Drive. So of course, I'm very familiar with Spring Valley. <clears throat> Uh, most of the points that I wanted to bring up, um, my biggest one was the safety vehicles. Um, God forbid if there's a baby that's going wrong and, and, that, and, and that emergency vehicle's got to stop or slow down three or four times to get the women's babies because that would be a travesty. Um, speed bumps, I don't think, are the answer. Um, you know, uh, I'm a tool maker by trade. I, I don't know what the answer is, but, but uh, you know, as far as... Uh, hurting our, our property values, hurting our cars. There's nothing good that's gonna come out of that speed bumps for the people that live there. If it's the people that are, you know, uh, you know, I mean, 
I mean, the whole, I've lived there 12 years. The only time I've ever said anything in my life about a speedo was a, a kid on a lime Ricky green crotch rocket that was going to kill somebody. And that speed bump was not going to stop that kid on that crotch rocket. I think we've all heard that kid go by. Uh, I've actually, I've actually, I've actually talked to a, an officer one time and said, you got to stop this guy before he kills somebody. Or uh, worse, that somebody's going to pull out a door here and crunch him or something. So, but uh, I'm glad you guys are looking at other options because I really feel it's the wrong thing to do. Thank you. Hi, thanks for having us. I'm Barbara Schmidt. I work, live at 2806 Mimosa. And I would just add on to what you just said. I'm a nurse over at Women and Babies and I drive that back and forth every day. I did, I did get a ticket many years ago <laughs> because I didn't think my car could go less than 25. But anyway, <laughs> um, so I paid my dues and um, I, did, I don't go over 25 when I can help it. But the guy was behind me on that crotch rocket and passed me actually on that road. Uh, my husband had somebody pass him on the road because they were getting frustrated. Um, so uh, you're going to get ro road rage, but the, the speed bumps were so close together. It's like by the time you get over one, you know, you got to stop and get over another. And I think I saw a school bus today going to work, and this was like as long as the space in between the, <laughs> the speed bumps was a school bus. Um, so as far as emergency vehicles, I think that's an issue um, getting to the hospital. Um, we do hear those a lot going back and forth. Uh, the other thing I was just going to say, more people are walking and biking, and for each speed bump, there were four signs. One saying speed bump coming ahead, the next one saying here's a speed bump here, and then on the other direction, speed bump coming ahead, here's a speed bump here. So four huge signs are covered now with these plastic. I mean, that's 12 signs in like 50 feet. It was just a little crazy for this the price of the signs and, and all that. And if our friends that like to bike ride, they're trying to avoid the speed pump with their bike. If they go over, they're going to get decapitated with the, the darn signs that say speed bump here. So there wasn't much space to maneuver around. And then um, because people like to bike ride and more people are walking, people are trying to get fit. They do have the sidewalks down on the lower part of Spring Valley. If that could just be extended somehow up into the further to the curb or somewhere so people could walk their dogs and feel safe. I mean, there's enough room maybe on the one side that people could use. If there's not on the other, um, fixing the drains so there's not ice out on the roads. Um, all those things would really help, I think, feel more like a community and more, um, you know, more walkable. I have walked to work already. <laughs> Um, when it snowed and different times and I do walk sometimes when I have an appointment at the health campus it's just two miles and it, it's a great way to get out and but I feel it's dangerous um, if you're not on that one side so thank you for your time. <clears throat> My name is Dale Weaver we live at 2873 Mimosa Lane and I would just I continue to encourage you to seek other alternatives. I agree with everything that the others have said here, and particularly with uh, what the commissioner said about, uh, I think what is what was there with the speed bump was penalizing far more people than it was than those who were violating the law. So I would uh, thank you for being open-minded about this and also to continue to seek other remedies for it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mike Schmidt. Um, I live at 2806 Mimosa Lane, and I uh, appreciate what you guys are, are doing and looking at and, uh, you know, taking a look at everything. Uh, I pretty much agree with most of what everybody hears, and I don't really want to reiterate what they've gone over already. Um, I, I will say that I like the idea of maybe having more of the signs up that flash the 25 miles an hour or whatever, and maybe in different locations, because personally for me that's kind of a reminder to slow down it's hard 25 miles an hour is not you know it's pretty slow 
And I'm not, I'm certainly not saying to change that because it's, it's a good speed for there, but it is hard to just, if you're not consciously thinking about it. So those are reminders going through. So if that's an avenue to look at, that to me is a, is a, a great way to go. The other thing out of curiosity, are, are you looking at this, just the section between Sylvan and Dorcia? That's what's kind of pinned here. And that's what I know we have the speed bumps there. Um, is it the whole of Spring Valley Road too? And uh, you know, what would be the plans for that too? Because I know that, you know, out towards Jacobs Creek, there's sometimes, you know, people can tend not to, you know, do the speed limit there and maybe have some of those signs out on that section, as well as you do on the other end, because I know at the other end towards Centerville, you do have one of those signs too. But uh, anyway, just food for thought, that's all. Thank you. I think it was the whole, there was, he had a question about what section, I believe it was the whole thing, wasn't it? When, when the ladies did the survey of the roadway, they did the whole roadway. But I think when we did the speed study, it was concentrated between Chestnut Valley coming out and Spring Valley. And there's that S turn there that really slows people down. So I think it was at the far ends of that. It's my recollection. Yeah, and I think, you know, just on the feedback that we've gotten tonight and before for tonight, I, th I think it's uh, would be just a good idea to send this back to our traffic engineer, ask him to come up with, you know, some other ideas. Um, you know, signs were mentioned, um, possibly some road, um, you know, painting the speed limit onto the road, that kind of stuff we can look at um, and some other things and see if we can go there first and then maybe uh, study uh, what what the speed is after we, we do some of those measures and see where we're at. Does that sound like a, a decent path forward, yep. Mr. Lefevre? Yes, let's, let's uh, try that next. Okay. Does that need to be a motion, Ms. Schweitzer, or are you good with that consensus? The consensus is fine. Okay, all right. Well, I wanna thank everyone that came uh, for this issue. Um, you know, thank you and appreciate you delivering your message in a uh, kind and gentle manner. Sometimes that's not always the case. So, um, but uh, you were heard um, and we will uh, take it under advisement and go back to the drawing board. All right, thank you. Up next, we have the uh, Orville speed bump uh, looking to, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the Orville uh, speed hump that will be installed uh, as part of the Farmingdale Road project. So um, understand why we're doing this. I just wanna make sure the timing of it, that we have the improvements to um, Marietta and Good Drive before we do the speed hump. That's my only concern. Is yeah, timing. according to what, how we're going to stage this, it's going to be Marietta and Good first, then the interchange or intersection of uh, Orville and Good, and then the speed bump will probably fall in line with the changes to Har uh, Farmingdale and Orville. Where did I read that we need some right away in conjunction with this? We need right away from the Millers, the Miller Farm, uh, and the, actually those three corners up okay. there. Okay, okay. Now, we do have temporary speed bumps there now, is that correct? Correct, one, yes. We haven't really had any uh, concerns about that. I mean, I know speed bumps can be useful in certain locations and obviously not in others, but just so we don't get another crowd of people in about that one, but that has been there in place and it doesn't seem to be. Yeah, it's probably going on two years, maybe, maybe longer, but that's been in place temporarily. And the, the resident that has it in front of his house does have no problem, doesn't have any problems with it. And I have not heard a complaint from anybody traveling through it. 
And one thing about that particular one, it's not going to push traffic in a different direction. There's no way, nowhere else for traffic to go to get around it. Um, so I don't think there's a lot of residents in that area, if I remember correctly. So there again, is a question, though, if, if it's I mean, I hate to bring it up, but even if it's even needed once we put the signal there. Was it promised as part of any discussion or anything? it was to the to the residents? Yeah. Early discussions. Um, is it something that maybe after we that we don't have to approve tonight, but maybe after we make the improvements that we take a look at how things are working and go back to them? We could. If we promised them, then I think we need to deliver. Um, but maybe they'll have a change of heart after they see the improvements in place and see how the road's working in the other areas. Okay. Once it's installed permanently, then it becomes an issue to get it out of there, but maybe we leave it temporary for now. We can do that. Mm -hmm. Or again, it may be that that's the correct solution for that locale, location. It's fine. It's just we see now that they don't work everywhere. Right. I think we've determined that so much weighs upon whether they are an abrupt bump or whether they're a more gradual speed table, such as the one on Miller Road, which still does its job, but it's not as <coughs> difficult to manage for someone who's driving at a reasonable speed. So here in the discussion, I think to give staff guidance, um, we'll leave the temporary one there. Um, we'll do all the improvements first, and then we'll go back to the homeowners. And if they still want it, then we'll follow through and deliver it. Does that sound reasonable? Harry, is that the one that's uh, very loose? Uh, that, that one is currently removed because it was taken out by the plow. It did elongate the hole, so it would. We just left it out for the winter. It would ne necessitate being moved slightly one way or the other. Um, we haven't had any complaints about that one, uh, other than good questions. Basically, it's like in the middle of a very long straightaway, and it does kind of work there. Um, so, again, your choice, um, but uh, uh, we did have to remove that one. Okay. And I, I mean, if, there, if it needs to be put back in on a temporary basis, it would have to be moved slightly one way or the other. Um, okay. And the property owner that was driving that is aware that it's part of the contract mm -hmm. for the project. That's not to say we can't hold off and do it last. Right. And if you feel it's necessary, we can reach out to them ahead of time. It's up to you. And just explain to them that you know we're not reneging. <clears throat> want to take a look at things. Want you to take a look at things when they're done, and, and see what you think, and yep. go from there. Okay. So Bar and Barcrest temporary speed bumps uh, discuss disposition of additional temporary speed bumps on these roadways. So uh, if you want to put that graphic up, sorry, you were. Um, mm. these are the speed bumps in the area of Farmingdale Bar and Bar Crest. We actually added a temporary one, which is where the pinpoint is there. The rest are permanent, but that one is a temporary one, which was added after the residents felt that the distance between those other two uh, allowed people to travel faster. So they wanted something in between. So I guess the question there is, since we're, well, maybe we're not bidding uh, speed bumps, but uh, should this one be included or not? So from my perspective, I really think that we need to, once these traffic improvements are made on Marietta and on Good Drive and every, the whole project's complete, we need to go back into this neighborhood and right size what we have here. Um, I mean, just looking at this diagram, it's absurd on its face. We would never, I, I just can't believe we did this to this development. 
one of the ladies that was speaking earlier mentioned that there's four signs for every speed bump. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's 40 signs that we have in that development right now. So I don't think they all have to come out, but I do think we need to right size it. What do you guys think? <laughs> Like a lot. I thought I've made myself clear about that situation over there many times. <clears throat> yeah, I think wait and see what happens with all the other improvements. I think part of that wait and see also is the prohibited um, left turn at uh, Farmingdale. So look at that as well. Perry, the, the temporary that's over there on, on, I think it's Bar Crest, Bar Boulevard. Is that one in for the winter or? Yes, that, that, one, that one stayed. Um, it, it, it may be a tad bit loose, but it hasn't caused any, any issues. Usually what happens is was the bolts come loose, they tend to stick up um, and that causes trouble with people hitting them with their tires. But so far so good with this one. So we left it alone. That one, like, basically, will stay until we reevaluate them. Any new business? I did have something just to bring up for the good of the cause. Is there was a uh, police report for the regular meeting, and that part of that was speeding citations issued going back to 2013. And for the month of January this year, there were 14 citations, which is the lowest in January going all the way back to 2013. Um, I think part of it was COVID related in 2020. That was the lowest for the year at 301 citations. Normally they're up around 600 to 800. And uh, last year in 2021, we had 468, which is the second lowest going back to 2013. So it, I think we've been kind of focusing a little more on the speeding and it, according to this, it looks like that may be uh, actually having an effect. So kudos to the police department. Um, so okay. we'll be in. <laughs> Interesting to see if it keeps, stays low like that. And like, there is a note here that 2020 was a COVID-19 was probably the reason for that low number, but the trend is going the right way, at least. Thank you, Mr. Weaver. Any other new business? Any public comments from the residents? Can I ask a question? Sure. Is there any Excuse me, could you use the microphone? Thanks. It helps for the people on, online. I'm a PIAA umpire. People hear me. <laughs> <laughs> is there any reason, uh, again, Bill Trites, I don't know what's Mr. Drive. Is there any reason on 741, when we get off on 741 off 30, and we're, and we're all in the, we're in the right-hand lane, is there any reason we can't have a, a right on red there? To be honest with you, I can't picture it. So. I can't either. Going towards. Closer, Are you talking thirty west? Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, if you're going, if you're going thirty west, and you get off, and you get off like you're going to Women's and Babies or, or going mm -hmm. to our neighborhood, you get, you know, it's, you, you know, it, 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 it's no turn on red. So if you get there for the beginning of that cycle, you're sitting there forever. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's town or state or, is it? Is there is there a reason why that we we couldn't ask them to change that? I mean, even if it was after rush hour, I mean, if you it's the the off ramp that you're talking about. Right? Yeah, I thought you meant when you go to turn into like that little shopping center there. No, no, no. I'm talking about the. I'm sorry, I wasn't clear. Yeah, I got. No, yeah, I, got I mean, I mean, if you hit that at the beginning of the cycle, mm -hmm. I mean, you're sitting there for. Yeah. Um, 
you know. Would it be sight distance? It could so generally be because of the grade. Can't see to the left. Cars coming over the bridge. I mean, we can look into it. Well, I'd appreciate it. It's just, it's just, especially, if, you know, if you're getting home and, at night and it's like, it's, there's no traffic coming and you're sitting and you hit, you know, when you, and if, and if it's green when you're getting off that off ramp, you ain't making it. <laughs> so, yeah. thank you. Good meeting. Thank you. That's a good point. Are you going to say something? Yeah, just generally, one, one thing that PennDOT usually doesn't like to do is when there's two or more lanes of traffic in the travel in that direction, uh, they do not like people pulling out into that. Um, just for the simple fact that somebody may go around another car, they may be in the outer lane, and all of a sudden they decide they need to be in that right lane. So PennDOT kind of discourages that. Um, because there are, there's actually three lanes of traffic there. Um, almost all the time when you look at it, they, they make it uh, so that there's no turn on red. Thanks for the explanation, Perry. Anyone else? I am Dawn Flayhardy. I live on Stony Battery Road, um, and I am in the west side of the street as opposed to the east. But I was here before and multiple times asking for help with the speeding on that road, which obviously the whole district has. Um, and right now it is unbelievable. I, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say anymore. All I want is for somebody to slow these people down. I mean, the traffic's not, I mean, over the years, it's gotten incredibly worse as far as the numbers of people, but the speed is just ridiculous. And even the, the trucks going in and out of the construction site across the street are speeding. It's incredible. I, I don't understand. I, I, everybody seems to be in such a big hurry, but we need to figure out how to slow these people down. You know, it's 35 through there and I guarantee you they're going way faster. We did actually do a study there in uh, December of this past year. No, 21, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's past year. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so the average speed was 36 miles per hour and the speed limit is 35. The 85th percentile was 42. So in terms of our um, qualifiers, it's, it's within... It meets the, I mean, it, it, they're not speeding in terms of the speed limit. They may seem like they're going fast, maybe because the trucks are larger, the perception is that they're going fast. Well, that's another issue too. I mean, I've had conversations with police officers in both East and West, mm -hmm. and some of those trucks are not supposed to be on our section of that road. They're not supposed to be any further than from Route 30 to QVC. The rest of it from there to Landisville, they're not supposed to be on. And I don't know what the size marker is on those, but I, they said the one police officer told me that they can't do anything about it because it's not posted, but it was a rule that y'all made. There, there, is no, there is no traffic limitation for trucks. We actually looked at that. We did some research on it. Um, now the, the warehouses, if they're coming out of the warehouses, they have to go left. They can't go right into Landisville. But if they're coming from 30, going wherever. That that Stony Battery Road as a shortcut between 30 and 283. And there's nothing that prohibits that at this point in time. Well, there was a size marker that uh, as far as like what size trucks were allowed between 30 and QVC, but not between QVC and Landisville. Yeah, I think we looked at between QVC and Landisville, closer to Landisville. Correct. No, you can't. Well, what's the left-hand turn thing? Is any but any any traffic coming out of those warehouses? The truck traffic has to turn. Oh, left. the new warehouses that are in front of our house. We've asked them to um, tell their truck drivers, and there's signage there. So if they're sitting there, they can't, the, the right-hand turn is prohibited. The problem, though, is if they do it, it's not enforceable by our police department. So then, what's the point? Well, for the most part, people obey the signs, but there are some that don't. You're right. 
but then they get down to the Landisville, uh, the interchange there, the intersection of Harrisburg Pike and, and Stony Battery and can't make the turn. Hmm. I mean, I know it's a thankless job y'all are doing, but I, I just, something's gotta be done. When was the study done just this past December? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I was thinking maybe the new warehouses along there are causing problems, but that wouldn't. Well, happen. they're not even rented out yet. Hmm? They're not even rented yeah, out. Yeah, I was yet. saying I don't know that they're not um, even being used, and the one in front of my house isn't finished. So December would have that effect or pick that up. So, I mean, I wish we had a better answer for you or we could. Is there a certain time of day or a certain time of the week that we could maybe recheck it? Well, it, in the one meeting, I don't know if it was here or if it was Wes, I don't know. I've been to so many now that they said, oh, well, they set up a, a speed trap for like four hours and they caught two people or something like that. I'm like, seriously? <laughs> well, <laughs> you I, know, mean I mean, the signs telling you how fast you're going that was up a few years ago. They used those a couple of times, and I do think they slow down a little bit. But, um, and then, you know, I had police officers tell me too that, you know, they write tickets and then they get challenged on the jurisdiction because of whether they're east or west. It's like, oh, please. <laughs> you know, I guess we could check it again. I don't really think I'm asking for anything more than just for a job that's supposed to be being done to be done. And if the people can't read the sign that says 35 mile an hour, then, you know, we need to have something to enforce that. So it is on our chief of police's radar. We did do a traffic study on it. You heard the results. You know, it's not yielding the- I was wondering what, how, when you're doing those studies, how long of a period of time are you doing it for? One week. For a whole week, mm -hmm. oh. seven days. Turned off, right? It's not on that people know it's there. Is that like the right? Yeah. Okay. We we thought sometimes people see the sign, then they slow down, and then that throws yeah. the study well, off. But it's this, funny, they don't know you know, that. if we're out in the yard or something, you can hear them come around the curve at up at QVC and hammer it. You, I mean, you can hear them going through the, the gears. And, you know, they talked about the clutch rocket motorcycle. No, oh, there's a lot of them. And see, our, lo our road is long and straight. Fairly un unencumbered for you know, we just people walking. We put it back in the rotation and try and check it again in the near future. Just, you know, make sure. I'm sitting That's in my driveway waiting for 65. I know they're going more than 35. <laughs> you put those signs back out. Try to rotate it too. I would be appreciated. Any any little bit of help would be. Don't put them on the pencil though. <laughs> <laughs> so it gets that sense of. Yeah. like whack-a-mole, I guess. You have to keep moving the signs around. Hmm. Hmm. Thank you.
Do we have anybody on Zoom that wanted to speak? No. Any other discussion for traffic commission? Okay. And we're going to adjourn the meeting. We will reconvene for the supervisors meeting at seven o'clock. I sat beside Chris Bauer at the hundred. Okay. We talked about Spring Valley and he was adamant defending his design solution. He's, I don't think he's going to come back with anything but speed bumps. Well, he's going to have to. <laughs> <laughs>